it's very important that you use your Humber email address. If you don't know your Humber email address, you're going to need to find out. Ask your program coordinator um, uh, or, or, you know, go back to the files you received when you first started at Humber in the fall. Okay? So you're, you're not going to use your personal webmail, Gmail, or anything like that. Do not log in using Facebook, Google, or Apple. You want to use your Humber email. Here's another thing. Do not log in using Adobe ID personal account. My past students have run into a problem where, for example, maybe they did a trial, a 30-day free trial of Adobe prior to this course, MSCP 1001, and, you know, that sort of... Uh, all that sort of information and passwords were saved on their computer. It may even try to automatically log yourself in in that case. You don't want to do that. That's, you're not going to be able to get that access. Log in through Humber's uh, account, through your, your Humber student account. Okay, so once again, I'm going to ask for your student ID, your N number. Okay, it's saying that it's resizing the screen, which is fine for my computer. So you're basically here, congratulations, you're in Adobe Premiere Pro. However, before you start to create a new project, to start editing exercise number one, this is very, very important. You need to set up your online storage for your clips and to export your edited video to, in addition to your Premiere project file. So, if you look at my screen very carefully, above Adobe Premiere, you can see this line of, of buttons, this toolbar. This is for your online cloud access. You want to click this little, looks like a little paper folder called My Files. You want to click that. You need to add storage. So this is where you're going to upload your clips to so that they're there later on. You can either use Google Drive for your online footage storage, or you can use what I've used, which is Microsoft's OneDrive. So you can see I've already set it up here, so I can't do it again for you. But for example, if I click Add Storage, you know I could also use Google Drive if I wanted. When you click when you click Add Storage, it should give you the option of Google Drive or OneDrive. OneDrive is Microsoft. I'm using OneDrive. Once you create either, once you connect, you're going to have to log into your Google Drive or your OneDrive account. Once it's set up, you want to go into it. So in my case, I'm using OneDrive. I'm going to click Files. This is how OneDrive is set up. I have all my files organized in my OneDrive by year. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a special folder for this assignment. Now you can see right now uh, I've clicked this thing, but it's 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 there's a bit of a delay. So again, it can be frustrating. You know, you can kind of wonder, is this working? What's happening? But you really just have to be patient. Keep if you click and it doesn't work, just wait a few seconds, or maybe 30 seconds or a minute. Click again. I'm going to click files again. I'm going to double click. <laughs> okay, so you can see here. I'm uh, I'm I'm sort of stalling out here. Oh, good. Okay, so there you go. So it finally worked. Okay, so I'm going to create a new folder, add folder, and I'm going to go my last. Oops, I'm going to click there. My last name. Exercise number one. Enter. Okay, so this is where I'm going to upload my footage to. So I'm going to click here. So again, you need to do all this before you start editing. Do not start editing in Premiere until you set up your online cloud storage for your footage. And then now, once you do that, and you can see me do the next step, I'm going to upload my clips to my online storage. I'm going to click here, Upload Files. Okay, so now I can see my desktop to my computer. You should be able to do the same. 
I'm going to click my last name, exercise number one. Now, because it takes time to upload these clips, again, like I said earlier, try to go through and pick your best takes. If you only have one take of each of the four framings, well, then those are the ones you'll upload. I did multiple takes, so here they are. So I'm going to hit Shift Command. Those are the, whoops, uh, pardon me, that surprised me. I'm going to just hold down Shift Command to individually select each clip. If you're on a PC, it might be a bit different, but basically you want to select all these and hit open, and then it will start to upload, okay? So we only have a few clips here, so it doesn't take a super long time, but for my computer, with my internet, I did this before to practice, uh, and it took about 20 minutes for me to upload my footage. So it may take you that long, might be a bit faster, might be a bit longer, might take half an hour, might take an hour. I know that might seem like a drag, but this is the reality of, of working with this footage and this software online. Um, okay, so once I edit this video for you, I'm going to cut out, for the purposes of time, I'm going to cut out all this waiting to upload stuff for you. But right now, uh, I just have to wait for my footage to upload, just like you will have to wait. So I'm going to come back once this is uploaded. I'm at just over 11% right now. I'll be back um, once it's done. So now we want to start actually editing. Okay, we've made it to that point. So we want to go File, uh, New, Project. Okay, now for starters, just type in, please, your last name, exercise number one, edit. And it's going to probably default to a C drive or something on your computer. That's fine for now. We're going to have to make sure we go and uh, resave that project file to your cloud storage um, but uh, before we exit. But that this will be fine for now. You can see here, I'm trying to, it's hard to get, oh, darn. Oof, OK. So it's, re, re, it's hard to get everything to appear on the screen sometimes. So I had to readjust. You might have to do the same to find my OK button. All right, here we are. We're into Adobe Premiere. Um, this is a new little panel with the most recent version, or at least the 2020 version, that Adobe added about, I don't know, little tips and stuff. Uh, I just close it, but check it out if you want. So here are the four main windows in Adobe Premiere Pro that you're going to want to familiarize yourself with. Uh, here is where you import your media. And uh, it's a little more complicated importing media when we're in the cloud, like we are right now. But say, for example, if the footage was just on your computer, you could go find it and import it here. But So that's the import folder. Here is the source window. So this is where you're going to be looking at and doing your preliminary editing of your raw clips. Here is your program monitor. This is where your edited um, timeline will show. And then here is the timeline. This is where you're doing your assembling of your clips, one, two, three, and four, in the case of exercise number one. And it's also where you're going to set your in and out points prior to exporting your edited video. Very important. We'll be coming back to that. All right, so let's import our clips that we uploaded to our cloud software. So if you click in the import window here, click this PC, and then you want to select through your computer the OneDrive or maybe Google Drive, depending what you used. Then you want to click, in, in the case of one uh, drive, it's I click Files, and then here's my folder that I created for this exercise, my last name, exercise number one. 
here are my clips. So let's see if we can select all of them. I'm not sure if we can import them all at once, but let's try that. It might only, you might have to do it one at a time, but let's see how it goes. Oh, it did collect, it, it got all, all of them, that's great. All right, so we've imported our footage, woo! Okay, so let's do with our, let's start with our first clip, uh, which is um, our extreme long shot, also known as an extreme wide shot. You can see here, even in the import bin, you can't play your clips. You can scroll through them right in the import bin, which is kind of neat. But we want to trim it, right? We want to trim it. So we're going to double click. And now here is uh, the footage in the source window. This is where we're going to do our editing. If we have four clips and we need a 20 second video, that means we need to, you need to edit each clip, each of your four clips to five seconds. Five times four is 20, because the total runtime of your edited video that you're going to hand in for exercise number one needs to be 20 seconds. So, okay, so let's just familiarize ourselves with the source window. Once you've double clicked your clip, uh, after you've imported all your clips, and then click one of your clips, double click one of your clips, well, that's a tongue twister, it, it will appear, whichever one you double click with your left mouse, it will, uh, or trackpad, it will uh, appear in the source window. To play the clip, just hit this little triangular play button. I can now see and hear the footage. Hopefully you can hear it as well. If not, that's okay. It is there. Okay, now this toggle, this little blue marker, if you left click on your mouse or your trackpad, you can move it around, which is kind of handy. Uh, also here, we're seeing video and audio. If you click this little waveform icon, you can, you can also just look at the audio um, recording, the audio meter, the left and right channel. Okay, but we want to be and we'll come back to editing audio and adjusting editing audio for video uh, in a future class. But this, again, is just the basic steps for your first exercise. Um, OK. So what we want to do, I have about a what? How long is this? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to click on this little blue triangle. Or it's not a triangle. It's a bit of a marker. I'm not sure what you call that shape, but a bit of a diamond, maybe. Uh, so we've got about a 24 second clip. So I just want to grab the best five seconds of this clip. So let's just play here. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna. You can see here, I'm, I'm at five seconds in 19 frames. Okay, there are. 29.97 frames per second of video, rounded up to 30 frames. We, you may have been shooting at 24 frames per second in terms of what we're actually seeing, but that is more of a, a compression technique to make 30 frames look like 24 frames. Uh, so I may be complicating things here, but at any rate, the, you can see once you get over 29 frames, it'll go to the next uh, clip. Oh, no, it's showing 24 frames. Okay, fine, great. Um, interesting. Okay, so I think the first five seconds of this clip is fine. So what I'm, this is very important, Jake. So you need to mark the in and out point of your clip. So what you want to do is go to wherever you want your edited clip to start, and then on your keyboard, hit the letter I. I is the shortcut for in point. You will mark your in point if you hit I on your keypad. So I'm going to hit I on my keypad. Here we go. There. 
You can see it just selected that point for my endpoint. Now I'm going to click with my mouse on the blue little marker here. I'm going to drag it to exactly five seconds and zero frames, which can be tricky, but you might have to practice a bit. So this is where I want my edited clip to stop. So now, so that's so we've, we've got it to five seconds exactly. Now on my keypad, I'm going to hit the letter O on my keyboard, on my computer's keyboard. O is the shortcut for out, out point. So here we go. I'm going to hit O. There. So now I've set my in and my out point for my clip. There's one more step here before we move to the next clip. You want to, this, this requires a bit of finesse and practice, so it might take you a couple tries. But what you want to do is, once you've set your in and out points, very important to do that. Then you want to left click on the center of your, of your, of your edited clip here, and you're going to drag and drop it into your timeline. Once it's over the timeline, you're going to let go of your key of your mouse or your trackpad, and then you're going to see it whoop, appear. It's going to drop in your timeline. So here we go. I'm going to left click on my clip, and whoa, there we go. Never a dull moment. I might, I'm going back to Premiere here. Okay, no, that's not what we want. <laughs> okay, gang, that was exciting. I've just been directed away from Adobe Cloud. So let's see if I can find it again. Oh, boy, that was fun. Uh, okay, so these are some of the challenges, some of the adventures that you'll have when you're editing. Where did it go? Oh, here it is. Okay, gang, so where was I? So you want to go left click on your mouse, drag and drop the click, the clip. You can see the clip. I'm holding on my left mouse right now. My cursor has turned into a fist, a hand that is like grabbing. It's grabbing the clip. And then once I know I'm in the timeline, I'm going to let go of my mouse. There, it just popped into my timeline. So that's how you do it. That's how you, once you've set your in and out points for your clip, you want to, in the center of the clip that has the in and out points selected, you want to left click on your mouse and hold on to it while you drag it into the timeline. And you'll know it's working because your cursor will turn into a hand that is sort of um, folded together into like a little fist that's like, you know, like it's supposed to be grabbing your video clip. And then once you know you're hovered over your timeline, let go. You can see once our clip was dragged from the source window to the timeline, you can see it in the timeline. We've got our video um, layer and then our two audio layers. So that's good. Um, but you can also see when I dropped it in the timeline, it also appeared in your program monitor. So this is your finished product, or at least this is sort of, at this point, your work in progress. So right now they're the same. But as you'll see, as we go through um, editing, this is the sort of, these are the individual clips that you're editing. And then this is your sort of edited timeline program, your, your final show. While we're here, let's just go Similarly, in the timeline, you can drag through your clips. And um, let's just play uh, what we've edited so far. Now, you could hit play in the program window. But if you go into, uh, this is a, a useful shortcut. When you're in your timeline window, you'll know you've selected your timeline window because it'll be outlined in blue. If you hit your space bar, you can play and stop by hitting your space bar. So here, here I go. I'm going to hit my space bar. Great. So I just played my five second edited clip. And if I click and drag that little blue marker in my timeline, I can drag it back to the beginning and I can play it again. If 
you look on the right side here, you'll see the audio one and two um, audio levels in green. And that's good that it's green. It means that it's not maxed out. Now, if you have a little bit of red, that's okay, but you don't want too much. Okay, let's go back to our, so we've edited, we've trimmed, as it's called, and dragged and dropped our first clip, our extreme long shot, into our timeline. Let's go on to the next clip. So we're back to our project window. I know I've selected it because it's outlined in blue. Now I'm going to do my medium shot. So I'm going to, on my mouse, with my left button, I'm going to double click. So you can see now my medium shot is in my source window. Okay, so now what I want to do is hit the little triangle to play, or I can hit my space bar. Okay, so again, I shot about 15 seconds here, but I only want five seconds. Again, I think the first five seconds are okay. So I'm gonna, I just grabbed my little blue marker there, dragged it, to, dragged it to the beginning of my medium shot clip. Just like before, I'm going to hit the letter I on my keyboard to mark the end point. Now I'm going to drag my cursor, my little marker here, all the way up to the five second mark. Five seconds, zero frames. I'm going to hit O mark my out point on my keyboard. Here I go. There, I've marked my in and my out points. Now again, now we need to drag and drop it into our uh, timeline. Again, it is a bit tricky. You'll notice when I drag and drop the clip, it's going to it's gonna snap right up against the first clip, which is great, because then you won't have any blank video in between your clips. So the default setting is your clips will snap together. And that's good if you want that. So here I go. I'm going to click the left mouse, the left button on my mouse, and I'm going to drag and drop it into the timeline. Hopefully I won't change screens like I did last time. Here I go. I'm clicking, dragging. You can see I haven't let go of my left button yet. I'm going to bring it over and snap it right next to the other clip, my first clip. And then I'm going to let go of everything. Voila. I've now got my, fir my first two clips into my timeline. So let's drag it back in the timeline. Let's watch our video so far. Here's the extreme long shot, and it should go right into our medium shot. Okay, that's pretty good. The audio we could probably play a little bit with, but for the purposes of this uh, uh, exercise, that's that's fine. By the way, if you want to change your view of your timeline, you can see this little scale here. If I grab this edge and then click with my left mouse, I can zoom into my timeline to get a closer look. Or I can zoom out once my clip gets really long. Right? So just a little tip for you there. In general, you don't really want to change any of these settings. We'll get into how to do that when necessary. We'll also talk about all these features. Feel free to play around. But right now, let's just keep it simple for this exercise number one. That's my advice. OK, speaking of keeping it simple, let's go back to our import folder, import window. I'm going to left click twice on my third shot, which is my close up of my subject's um, left hand. So let's play that. OK, and I'm going to drag it to the beginning again. There, there's a noise that starts. Um, there's some kind of machine or something that starts running at about the 11 second mark. So I'm actually going to go, I want to I sort of edit 
before that noise happens. So I'm just going to go here and hit I on my keyboard to set my endpoint, point, and I'm going to hit spacebar to play. Actually, you know what? To keep it simple, let's just go to the beginning always, unless there's a problem at the very beginning. So zero, zero, spacebar to play, spacebar again to stop. But I'm nine frames longer than I want to be, so I'm going to use my left mouse to drag the little marker back to exactly five seconds, zero frames. Good. Now I'm going to hit O on my keyboard for out. There, I've got my in and my out, same routine. I'm going to left click on my mouse, drag and drop, line it up, snap it, let go. All right, we're almost done here, gang. Let's just watch what we got so far in our program monitor by dragging our marker to the beginning, to zero. In our timeline, I'm going to hit space bar on my keyboard to play. There's an audio cut up there, but we can look at that later. Oh, and again there, that's interesting. Okay, so we've got some audio dropouts between clips, which is interesting. I wasn't anticipating that. Um, we can come back to that. But again, like I said, if you can just get your four shots brought into Premiere, edit them together into a 20-second video, then that's the goal for exercise number one. Okay, let's go back to uh, our import window to our extreme close-up of the face of our subject. I'm going to drag to the beginning, play to make sure it's okay. Looks like we've got a good five seconds there. So I'm going to hit I on my keyboard for end point, and then I'm going to go to five seconds, zero frames, hit O on my keyboard for out, and then I'm going to left click on my mouse, drag, hold down on my left mouse, bring it up so it's snapping. If you get those little, um, I'm still holding my mouse by the way. If you uh, if you get that little, see those little blue tri, uh, sorry, white triangles. That means you've snapped right up against. Let go and we're good. Okay, I'm going to drag. I'm going to select and drag. Let's play back our video. I hit spacebar to play there. Here is my first clip. Okay, there we go. So we've edited our four clips into one 20 second video. And you know, I know you're all striving for excellence, so I'm actually going to do a little something extra here. I, I don't like that there's dropouts in the audio. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay in some room tone. And I, I didn't mention this in our first class, but when you go out to do a shoot like this, you always want to stand there and shoot at least, you know, 30 seconds of room tone, which is just the tone of the room, the sound of the room. I happen to be outside for this shoot, but what is 30 seconds of the sound outside? You want to um, you want to record that, ideally. So, okay, I shot for 30 seconds here, so that's great. So here's a little trick I want to show you. Once I've got my four clips edited, this is optional. If you don't want to do this, you don't have to, but I don't like the audio dropout. So I'm going to insert a consistent audio bed just to try to make it a little more even of an edit. So what I'm going to do is this clip here, I'm going to sort of, I'm going to steal the audio from it. So I'm going to go to the beginning, hit my end point. I'm going to drag here to 20 seconds because that's how long my video is supposed to be. Okay, so I've, and then I'm going to hit O for edit. So I've just got 20 seconds of synchronous, no dropouts, there might be some wind buffering, there might be some beeping, but at least it's consistent. There's no silence. Now, I only want the audio, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click here so that I'm only going to grab the 20 seconds of audio.
So if I left click and drag, okay, it doesn't doesn't want to do that. Interesting. Um, drag video only. Oh, okay, I know what to do. Okay, so I've got my 20 seconds here. I'm gonna, yeah, okay, I remember now. So you want to actually, it's very small, particularly on my laptop. You want to put the, your little cursor over the waveform monitor icon only. We don't want the video and the audio. We just want the audio. We're stealing the audio for our bed. So I'm putting my cursor over the uh, audio monitor. I'm going to left click on my mouse, drag it down to A3. Now I'm going to let go. So now I've just put in a 20 second audio bed that's from the same clip. And let's just uh, play that back in our program on Here we go. I'm going to hit spacebar to play. So hopefully you can hear now, when we go to the clips, each clip, there's some wind buffering, but at least it's a consistent, we don't hear the audio drop out. So that's much better, for, I would say, uh, in terms of an audio bed. Okay? Uh, I'll show you a little other shortcut here, game. If you want to see your, your final edited masterpiece a little bigger on the screen before you export it, Here's a little uh, trick. So in the program monitor, left click in the in the middle of your program monitor. You'll know you've selected it because it's a blue border around it. Then on your keypad, the top left hand corner of your keypad, next to your number one, you should see a button that has two little markings on it. Yeah, a squiggly line and then a angled line. That squiggly line, is, as some of you may know, is called tilde. So if you want to change the size of your screen, just hit the tilde button, and it'll make it bigger. Watch this. I'm going to hit tilde. So it's now zoomed in to just that, just your edited program clip. Let's play back our masterpiece here. Beautiful. Oh, it's a beautiful thing. So if you want to go back to your normal key, uh, you know, normal layout for Premiere, just help hit the tilde button one more time, and it'll bring you back. Okay. While we're on this topic, if for some reason, like you saw me earlier, my whole screen went away at one point. <laughs> uh, but if you have it, so these things happen. Just remain calm and go back and try to get things sorted again. Uh, if you lose one of these four windows, here's a trick on how to get them back. Click here on editing, left click your mouse, see these little lines? Click reset to save layout. And that will bring back all your four windows. Project window, sort, here let me click them. Project window, source window, program window, timeline window. All right, so there's a little trick there for you. Again. If you lose one or more of your little windows, or the size is all wonky and you're like, ah, I, I just want it back to where it was, click editing, these three little lines here, uh, reset to save layout. It'll bring back all your windows. Okay, we're almost done editing, gang. The last thing to do is to export your video. It's very important to set your in and out points in your timeline before exporting your video. Otherwise, it will export, well, who knows what it'll export. It could export an hour-long, huge file. And that happens sometimes with students, so you don't want that. So here we go. How do you export? Go to your timeline, please. You'll know it's selected because it's outlined in blue. Grab your blue little marker here. Drag to the beginning of your edited video, your masterpiece. Just like before, hit I to mark your in point. Okay, now come along here to the end of your video, and it's supposed to be uh, 
20 seconds exactly, right? So make sure you get it to, oh, sorry, yeah, 20 seconds, zero frames. Now hit O for out. We've just hit the, we've, we've marked the in and out points of our video. So that's great. Okay, next, up here, top left-hand corner of Adobe Premiere, click File, scroll down to Export, Media. So I'll just keep that on the screen there for a little bit. Click File, scroll down to Export, and then you're going to want to click Media. The shortcut is Control plus M, but I'm just doing it through the menus so you can see it all. I'm going to hit my left mouse button to select it. Now again, I'm going to adjust my window so it all shows on the screen. Okay, there are a few important kind of uh, settings you need to set here. Under format, depending on the camera you shot on, it could be any number of formats. You want H.264. H.264. So please select that. Just keep match source high bit rate. Uh, quickly, a little bit about H.264. This is a uh, compression type of compression. <laughs> codec that maintains the high quality HD video that you've worked so hard to shoot and edit, but it's not like a super big file, which is handy when you're uploading to YouTube, which we're going to do after this. Okay, so H.264, just keep match source. This is very important. This is the, you'll see here, this is the only blue text. It's going to output your video as an MP4 video, which is what you want. Again, this is a type of video file, high quality, but, but not a super large file. You don't want to export like an MOV file, like a full res QuickTime file. That's going to be way too huge. And I know sometimes students do that because they say, oh, I want the quality to you know, be top. Well, that's great, but trust me, MP4 is going to look just as good, but it's not going to be a monster file. So it has given our project sort of this default name based on our clips. But we want to give it an original name. So, and we want to save it to our computer, actually to our cloud, because we're in the cloud. Then we're going to download it to our computer. OK, so click, please, under output name, click the blue file, and then you can rename it. So please rename it, your last name, no spaces, exercise one, edited. Okay, please name your file what you've edited. Please, your last name, exercise one, edited. And then we want to tell it where to save it. So if you're on your own, if you have Adobe Premiere on your home computer, just save it to your desktop. But if you're using it through the cloud like I am, please click this PC, OneDrive, In the case of OneDrive, I go Files, and then here's my my last name, exercise number one folder. Save it here. This is very important. If you don't save it here, it, who knows where it'll go? It might not be saved, and all your work will be lost. And you don't want that. That would be sad. That'd be everyone would be sad. You, me, everyone. So make sure you save it back to the cloud. So now I'm going to hit Save. So you can see here, I've now given it an original name, and I've told the computer where to save it. Last thing to do is to hit export. Bottom right hand corner of this uh, window. And it, the computer is now exporting the edited masterpiece. In this, in this case, it's exporting it to um, my online cloud storage through my Microsoft OneDrive. You might be saving it to Google Drive, or you might be saving it directly to your computer if you have Premiere um, on your home computer or wherever you might be editing. So once it does that, then you should be done. Now, before you leave, you always want to check, make sure it works, right? So go up here, please, to the cloud computing uh, buttons. Go into My Files. In my case, I'm clicking OneDrive, Files, May Exercise Number One, and here's my edited video. Woohoo! 
here it is. Pretty good, eh? Um, okay, so we know it's there. We want to save one other thing to our cloud storage before we close. We want to save our Premiere project file. That is a file that remembers all of these settings. It won't save your clips, but it'll save sort of the uh, the infrastructure, the the scaffolding, the all the kind of elements here. You're in it like your your project file. You want to save that as well. So here, if you go File, Save As, and you can see here, it's Adobe Premiere Project. It's a .prproj file. That's not a video file. That's just sort of the, the frame, the infrastructure of your project. So again, th th that name, that's fine. I want to go this PC, OneDrive in my case, Files. And then I'm clicking May exercise number one. And then I want to save my project file as well. OK, so now we've saved our edited video, our MP4. Do not hand in anything that doesn't say MP4 at the end. It shouldn't say PR, PROJ. That would be a Premiere project file. It should be an MP4 file. So we've saved all that to our cloud software. So that's great. So now we can exit. So let's go File, scroll down here to Exit. So we're now exiting Premiere Pro. But of course, we made sure that we checked that everything that we worked on was saved to our cloud storage. Because otherwise, at this stage, if you didn't save your video, it would be gone now. And it would be very sad for everyone. Um, over the top right hand corner here, let's log out of our cloud computing now. So I'm going to end my oh, I'm going to end my session. End session. Okay. So the next step is to upload it to YouTube. Hi everybody. So I'm here to cover the last part of exercise number one, which is uploading your edited exercise number one video to YouTube and then posting that YouTube link to Blackboard so that I can give you feedback and grade your exercise number one. So the first step is to download your edited exercise number one that you saved from Adobe Creative Cloud to either Google Drive or uh, OneDrive, which is Microsoft. So as you will recall, I use OneDrive. If you want to use OneDrive, you can get it uh, as being a student at Humber as part of it. It's part of the Office 365 suite, okay? But it's OneDrive that I'm using. And here you can see, here's the folder featuring my video, my, my exercise number one, and here's my edited video. So I'm going to select it. It's an MP4. I'm going to download it to my desktop on my computer. I've done this before to practice, so it's saving it again. But just make sure you're saving to your desktop. It's an MPEG-4 movie, and then you want to save it. Once it's saved to the desktop of your computer, now you want to go into YouTube and upload it to YouTube as an unlisted link. If you don't have a YouTube account, you're going to need to create one for this class. If you have Gmail, you already have a YouTube account. So you can log in, you can sign in, top right hand corner of YouTube. So this is where you click to upload the video, your edited exercise number one video that's on the desktop of your computer. And you want to open it. So again, depending on your computer and your internet, it could take a while. But while we're waiting for it to upload and process, you could just keep the same name. But scroll down to the bottom here, you have to say, it won't, you can't move forward unless you say, yes, it's made for kids, or no, it's not made for kids. This is not made for kids, this exercise, so please click no. Then click next. That's fine. Click next again. And then you want to select an unlisted YouTube video. Not private, or I won't be able to see it, and not public, because then the whole world will see it. So for this exercise, number one, just pick unlisted, and then hit save. 
Okay, then you can close this. And once it's all uploaded and processed, it will show under your content. Okay, so here's the video. Looks like it's ready. It's a short video, so it was pretty quick. You always want to play your video, make sure it 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 works. So you always want to check your video, make sure it works. That's great. So that's fine. So now come back here and you want to copy the link to upload or sorry to paste to Blackboard. So click these little dots here for the options. Get shareable link. It will copy it to the clipboard. To be safe, maybe you want to open up Word and um, create a new document. And then if you hit edit paste, there's your YouTube link. So you could save this and upload it to Blackboard and say, here's my video. Or you could just paste this link right into the comment box of Blackboard. All right. 